Once he get his stuff together, so Peace and Black Power family, you know what it is. I got the Captain Tazoriak right up in here. Easy, I got Captain Tazoriak. Yo, what it is? What's up, my man? You know it. You know it. I got Captain Tazoriak up in here. We waiting on a powerful brother to come through. David Banner, of course. We're going to get a powerful interview going on. <laughs> All right, yeah, my brother Captain Tazoriak. Um, we getting ready to go sit down with our brother David Banner. Um, do you know anything about him? Do you know his background? Because I don't. I don't know what he follow. I don't know what he believe. But I damn sure know that he hate that damn white man. Yeah, I like that man. Like, I can always have common ground with anybody that hates the white man. <laughs> we can, like, that's damn near the basis of having common ground where you can get that level because then I know when I speak about all the shit that the white man has done to us, I ain't got to have this peck of wood in black color coming across making it seem as if I can't say that. You know what I mean? So, of course, we know Banner comes from the hip-hop background. But what I do notice lately, the past couple years or whatever, he's been more on, I don't like to use the word conscious, but he's been more on a black empowerment type of vibe so to speak and I like dealing with individuals like that like the lines that the barriers that we got to cross as far as our spiritual guidance you know we can always discuss that but black people being towed up from the flow up that could never go out of style you know with any individual that's like that so I was you know, just from the bit of stuff you was telling me about his career I only know vague you know what I mean I only know a couple of songs that he had or whatever. Now I do know he pioneered the South a little bit. Like he was one of them with Lil Flip, with uh, T.I., all them young brothers and everything that came in. He was a part of that there. That's what's up. So like I know like he, you know, he did pioneer that South when it came in. He was one of the front lines of that. But it seemed like what I used to notice, I remember he had this song Cadillac on 22s. And even though the song was Cadillac on 22s, he was like, I ain't did nothing in my life but stay true. So you can see like his vibe was a little different than the average down south rapper. No disrespect to no down south rapper, but his vibe was just different. So it seemed like a natural progression for that brother to eventually do this. I was watching his recent video where he gave props to the most high. As soon as I heard him say props to the most high. <laughs> so, you know, I look forward to meeting the brother, you know, having a good dialogue. You know, I mean, I could dialogue with anybody no matter what walk of life they come from. So I look to having a good dialogue with the brother. Hopefully we can get it in. All right. You want to get time to put those on? Yeah, I can put it on while I'm asking about tickets. Okay. Um, I know I asked you this question before, but I want to ask it again, right. being as it's been maybe a couple of years now. <laughs> a couple of years? All year. All year. Right. I want to know um, why, why you chose the Hebrew Israelites instead of, like, African consciousness in your life because I know you've been a part of everything at one time in your life going growing up You see the red black and green you see the black power militant group there, there, there you go, so Why why make that change like that when you know? that the first Nation was in Africa brother like in ancient Kemet when you know that we got great civilization in ancient Kemet and all that that's what I want to ask. Let me tell you something, man. Y'all black people got to stop this whole the first, the first, the first stuff, man. The first don't mean nothing when right now we last. So we first civilization. I'm, I'm going to make y'all right just for the sake of argument. I'm not going to argue who was the first, where he came from or nothing like that. So we the first civilization, first scientists, first astrologers, first doctors, first everything. But don't mean nothing now because we last now. So we got to go back to what will bring us to the top. Now, it's good. Now, again, I'm going with the premise that y'all right. So it's good to bring that information in there. But we got to bring something else to get these cats that you see on these corners. Only Israelites could get them off that corner. Straight like that. Straight like that. You know how I know? When I traveled, I just came from Chicago. We had a Midwest cookout. I'm seeing brothers come, we all converging. So brothers from California, from Florida, from uh, North Carolina, from Minnesota, from Indianapolis, from Detroit. All these cats that straight gutter niggas. I'm saying it on purpose. Straight from the gutter, straight hustlers, thieves, bodies, shot, whatever, whatever it is that you could think of, 
these brothers done it. And then they heard us say, they didn't hear us say, yo, you know, we was the first this, we was the first that, we was the first this. But they heard us say, brother, if you care about your brother, you'll stop doing what you're doing. Like, if you be about brotherhood, like it's evil. Like, we, we address the direct issue that's plaguing black people. So, a lot of people, when I did that sit down with Jabari, he brought up the whole first thing. I said then and I said now, I ain't concerned with first. You know what I mean? I ain't, that, that ain't really my battle. Now, if you're going to tell me something about Kemet that's going to get these cats off the corners, by all means, give it to me. But since I've been in the conscious community since 2013, when polite little ass walked in front of the camp, we weren't on the side of Lennox that we on now. We was on the other, remember we was on the other side with, where, where they got their Whole Foods at. From that moment up until now, I ain't never seen a Kemet on the street dealing with these drug dealers. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying I ain't seen it. I ain't never seen a Kemet. I ain't never seen an RBG. I ain't never seen none of them on the front lines and not delivering, and I ain't saying that Kim, Kimmy brothers, brothers that follow this religion, I ain't saying that they don't have no love for black people. I want to be clear. But I ain't seen them use comedic religion, comedic science to free them from the oppression that they suffering on that corner. But I have seen Israelites. So your question was, what made me join the Israelites? Because I seen the Israelites on the street directly addressing what is plaguing black people and I love black people I would die I would give my life for black if I had to die if me dying meant black people could get free I'd rather die so that my people could get free I would rather that and I needed to be in the organization that number one was about truth number one was about the most high and number one could fix black people yeah I see you <laughs> yeah, I just gotta make sure he ain't a hammer. Y'all know y'all. <laughs> crazy, man. Now, I only say that because you made, you know, Polite had the whole summer jam joint the last time. Man. You gotta be civilized, brother. Right. You telling me that you will not feed an African child? She will not, if she's hungry, you too. She's hungry. And she come to you, excuse me, sir. Can I have a hamburger? You telling me you would tell that little child to get the hell out of here? That you don't, now be careful because yo, this right here could really blow you up. A young five-year-old baby, hungry, you see the ribs, man, African. You telling me that you will turn that baby down from feeding that baby? Okay, now, now before I answer your question, I'm just going to ask you one thing. Do you love black people? Yes, I do. You love the history of black people? Yes, I do. You remember the history of black people, yes, right? Somewhat. Here's what I remember about the history of black people. What I remember about the history of black people is that nobody cared about our babies when they were throwing them on them ships for slavery. Nobody fed them when we was under the bottom of the barrel of the ship. Nobody fed them. Nobody cared about the black woman when she was on her menstrual cycle. They didn't bring, they didn't bring her nothing to cover up the blood from dripping. That blood had to drip. Nobody cared about the brother if he had to take a shit. He had to defecate right next to his other brother. And then you imagine that stench of that. It would come up and then all manner of diseases from that shit would come up out of there or whatever. So now, how do we honor them? How, how, you honor them by finding out who fucked them up. Excuse my language. You find out who tore their ass up. Who put them in that condition? And when we find out the nations that put them in that condition, we have no dealings with those nations like that. Christ said something real heavy. Christ said, let the children first be fed when that white woman wanted to get a blessing. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah he, he directed. You messing up my vibe, sir. I'm, I'm he, he probably doing that on purpose because I'm dropping it heavy on him. Don't take that part out either. Leave that in there, oh, sir. No, so, Christ said, let the children first be fed, right? The white woman said, yes, Lord, recognized her position as a dog. She said, but the dogs eat from the crumbs. These Africans and uh, white folk, Japanese, they look at themselves as the children. And they look at us as the dogs. Even though they've trampled us underfoot. So if I give my love to anybody else other than my people, I'm selling my ancestors short. So I cannot feed an African. I don't care how old he is. He could be two. He could be 80. He won't get shit from me. 
because nobody gave my ancestors shit when they was bringing us on them slave ships. And then when they brought us over here and they said we couldn't read or write, where was the African nation that first sold us that said we're going to redeem y'all and bring y'all back? Nobody. For 400 years, nobody gave a shit about us. To 2017, nobody gives a shit about us. Philando Castile, cop got off. The brother in Milwaukee, cop got off. And I got to feed some African from another nation when his ancestors sold my ancestors. Nobody asked the Jewish man to feed the German. Nobody. Because everybody understands the Holocaust was fucked up. So if a Jewish don't want to feed a German, they understand that. But if I don't want to feed this African, or if I don't want to feed an Arab, or if I don't want to feed a white man, I got to feed him? That's how much Stockholm Syndrome black people got. And that one second, and that's the oppression black people suffer every day, where we're forced to love our enemies, even though they still fuck us up every day. What African show us love? You do that for me, and you got me. And I don't mean black people that think they African. Like polite, you know, he think he African, shocker, they, them niggas ain't African. They niggas grew up in Harlem and Brooklyn. Show me the Africans that fight for us, and then you could tell me about an African that can't eat with me. Make sure you leave all that. First of all, oh yeah, first of all, let me say this, brother. It was not the Africans who told you they can't feed you, brother. You were really talking about the white man. It was the white man who put you on them slave ships. It was the white man who told you, no, you can't go to the bathroom. You got to use your number one and your number two right here. Not all Africans, brother. It was not all Africans was enslaving Africans. I'm asking, I'm answering you. How did we get in that Because we have traitors amongst us. No, let me ask you. You said, ask me the question. No. <laughs> I said, how did we get in that ship? We got in the ship because just like today, you have black people who are traitors, you see, who went against the grain who sold us out, just like you got Negroes who killed Malcolm. It was niggas who killed Malcolm, not black men. So we ha always had traitors amongst us. Where was we at in Africa for us not to be African? So think about this, Captain. History. If we in South Africa, or if we in West Africa, and Africans come and get us, we had to be Africans for Africans. We just was another nation. That's all. It was nations fighting nations all the time. And that goes on all the time. So you cannot condemn the whole continent of Africa, brother. That's the point that I'm trying to make. We have traitors amongst our nation. Look at Pharaoh and Seti. <laughs> Yo, look at Pharaoh and Seti, bro. You ain't got to touch that. But I'm just saying, look at Pharaoh and Seti. Look at the niggas who killed Malcolm. Bro, look at the niggas who said, we're going to try to our best, the ones that shot Marcus Garvey. Look at the niggas who shot Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had to leave Jamaica to come over here to us. So look at that, bro. I could go on and on showing you these traitors of our people. Go ahead. When they shot Malcolm, right, you had black people that came to the defense to try to save and help Malcolm, right? Right. So it wasn't all black people that wanted to exactly. shoot. It was just some, right? So now you're trying to give me that same premise for Africa. What African nation said this was wrong and stopped us from being sold into slavery? No African nation. That's my point. Like, it's 40 countries, maybe 50 countries in Africa. You're telling me not to blame any of them. Give me the one country that sent the boat to free us. We need to learn honor. Like, that white man, that nigga had Memorial Day every year. And he honors them fallen people from World War II, World War III. Where I, I spoke about the Holocaust. And they have a permanent disdain for the nations that destroyed their people. We don't. Even if you want to call us African, we Israelites. But let's go with your notion that we African. You said the Africans always went to war with each other, right? The war ain't over then. The war wouldn't be over then because they never... Hold, no, 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 no. I ain't talking about them fighting each other. I'm talking about us over here. When Africans come over here, they look at us like we ain't shit. That's true. Straight like that. So now, you want me to love somebody that when they come over here, they still hate. Now, they still looking to look at that lazy nigga, Kata. That's what they call him. Look at that Kata. Look at that Kata. That's what they say to us all day. And now, I got to be concerned about him. Where there ain't nobody caring about these brothers on the corner. Who going to talk to them to get them off the corner? Africans don't. Israelites do. Who gonna talk to that woman that been molested? Africans don't. Israelites do. 
Who gonna talk to these brothers that's all destroyed, ain't got no daddies in the house, and who gonna put a father in the house? Africans don't, Israelites do. How do I know? Because we do it every day, all day. So I can't give my love, I can't give my love to anybody but my people. That's it. Okay. So where were you in Africa for the Africans that come in? No, I'm just asking you a question. Where was you? Hold on, because you know I'm about to bust your ass on this one. Where were you? And you too, my brother. Where were you in Africa before the white man got there in order for you not to be an African? Because I know you wasn't here in America by your damn self. You wasn't in China. So if you're not an African, what the hell are you doing in Africa? What was you doing in Africa for the white man to get you and put you on the slave ship? You're really helping my argument. You're not helping the argument. Go ahead. Go this ahead. is a very easy. Now, I brought this out when Reggie asked me this question. In 70 AD, when Jerusalem fell, when the Romans destroyed the uh, nation of Israel at that time, over one million Jews fled into Africa. They fled into other parts too. But over one million Jews fled into Africa. This is a historical fact. So when we went into Africa, we knew exact. Wait, let me finish. No, I gotta correct that. Look. You said you flew in from where? You came when I'm saying when I'm saying flew, not flew in the air. We, we traveled from where? From Israel. We traveled from this. This is Israel this Israel. A historical. Israel. You know, I'm, now I'm gonna cut you on that too. You, what did they used to call black people back in the day? You from Harlem? You should know. Did they not call us Asiatics? Yes. Why do they call us Asiatics? Because they used to call Africa Asia Major. Asia Asia they, they used to be Asia Minor, Asia Major. Right. Depending on who controls the map is what that land is going to be called. Africa is a young name. Maybe a couple thousand, yeah. maybe like one, two, three. Right. It used to be called Asia. So don't give me the whole uh, Israel is in Africa mumbo jumbo. Chinese people and white people have been in Africa for thousands of years too. When the Ptolemies came into Africa, they took it over too. So are they African? Hell no. The continent that you live on don't make you that people. Chinese people in America are still Chinese. They've been over here thousands of years too. So now when you go into an old mapping system, you can find African maps, I'm saying that word on purpose, that will say land of Judah. You have tribes that we will go into. A lot of people don't like to talk about that part, but like the Ashanti tribes or the Igbo tribes. Now, I'm not saying we were the Igbos or Ashantis, but we were among... One, one second, let me finish. Let me finish. You come from the Ashanti people, brother. But what I'm trying to say is, we was among them. And when you go through history, the reason why they sold us is because we was more intelligent than them. It was warfare. Like how you said it was warfare. So because of that warfare, they sold us. So I will never love an African because I love my people too much. People went, when them, when them towers fell, whether Osama did it or not, America did not care that they wasn't killing Osama over there in Iraq or Afghanistan. They was killing men, women, and children. You know why they didn't care? Because at American people fell. So because American people fell, they didn't care who died. Well, my people died, 99 million black people died, and they worrying about whether I will feed an African or deal with an African. When the Africans come over here, they show nothing but a hatred for us. I, I question those black people's uh -oh. honor. The killers is here. I question whether here. those black people have the honor that they should have. So bad. All right? There you go. Sankova want to be like me so bad. Yeah. You know, he ain't been wearing the hats. Yo, I'm over here busting Captain Ass by myself. Hey, don't turn on me. I'm done with busting Ass. I'm busting Captain Ass by myself. None of that out. Leave it all wrong. Yeah. Leave the cap alone. He done paid his dues, man. He ain't on the So, So, listen, listen. No, we talking about Africa right now. So listen, brother. No, no, go back to that so, so, so you still ain't answered the question, because the people. Hold on, hold on. Where was you at? Where was you at? And uh, right, but see, come on, man. It wasn't even called Israel. What is you talking about? No, it wasn't, brother. You tell me. <laughs> it was called Israel, Jerusalem. I got my historian here. Yeah, it was called the nation of Israel. Say again? I said that. 1948 it was called Israel. This is the question. No, no. 1948 it was called Israeli. Not Israel. What was it called before? It was called none of that. That question I would say, but we would be on the western part. We would be primarily on the western part. Israel. Yeah. 
we would be primarily on the western part of Africa. The Israelites were all over the planet. Acts two five. It said that the Jews. Did they have slaves? Right, right. But who have slaves in Israel? The Suez Canal. It was there. That wasn't called no Israel. What was it called? It wasn't called Israel. Look it up. You do your homework. That's what I'm trying to tell you, brother. It was always Israel. You know what's called the Middle East after the Suez Canal was built. Do you know about that? Mm -mm. They called them uh -huh. and them crackers named But what I do know and They named it Israel when you, First they was trying to find hey, you want a land to make this Yeah, yeah uh -oh, the, uh -oh. the, the white Jew was trying to make a land to call their own They was trying to use Dominica Republic as a place under the um, uh, presidential administration of Raphael Trujillo. They was trying to use that and that's when the parsley massacres took place well, who you call the Levites, where well, they was murdering them off, so-called ethnic cleansing because they wanted to make it, they wanted to make it suitable for the white Jew because that was about to be called Israel. So, if well, the, let me finish. I'm just asking what time frame. That was in the 1930s. Okay. What year? I'm not sure, but in the 30s, give you, it's in the neighborhood of that time frame, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and this is love, this ain't a tip for tap, being in my brother's building. As long as he's going on a white man, and he's waking up our people here, and he's cleaning up people, and he's getting them off drugs, and he's getting people, so we don't want the viewership out of it to get it twisted, acting like we're having a redundant conversation. This is brotherly love, and still shopping, and still. However, if that was called Israel, then, and the Jew manifested his fake destiny then, and in Dominica Republic, would y'all be trying to say that was Israel? Because they named, they were trying to look for Uganda and try to say that that was Israel. They was all over the place trying to find a land, but then they settled there. And now we're saying that's Israel when that was Northwest Africa before the Suez Canal. So we want to know if it was called Israel in the Bible, what verification of where it was called Israel up until the time, well, before the time where they named it under the Jewish paradigm of Zionism now. That's the question I think he's trying to articulate, but he didn't do it right because his hat's on too tight. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, come back over here, Kobe. Don't go nowhere. No, no, no. I no it was, no, he I'm spoke tripping. over. Yeah, he ain't had to go nowhere. No, I was just walking. My leg the was history walking. that he gave, which I don't disagree with as far as them wanting to put Israel, mm -hmm. excuse me, put that Jewish bastard everywhere, I don't disagree with, but he's talking about the 1900s. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? 1900s, 1930s. No, but 1930. That's why I said roundabout. I ain't trying to get exact with it. And my point for bringing that up is, when they put the white man in that place that they called Israeli, because that's what they—that's what it's called. They were called Israelis. That was called Israel. No, no, the, Israel. no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the, the Jewish okay. man. He don't call himself uh, uh, an a, Israeli. Right. No, he called himself Israel. an Israeli though. Mm -hmm. What did the uh, Iranian ruler at the time say about that? He said, "When the Jews left, they were black, but when they came back, they're now white." Now, why would he say that if we weren't already living it? The, that's the proof. I don't have to go. Did he live in location? Or he just said Jew. One, one second. Okay. Jew is short for Judah. That's a tribe of Israel. So if he's saying they left black, came back white, that means we left Israel. Did he say Israel or say left? Where would they be leaving from? You see, no, yeah, no, I, no, now no, he no, want to no, deal with. No, some, no, he ain't no, want to no, deal with no, semantics no, at no, first, no, no, but no, now no, he want to deal with no, semantics. No, let me tell you why. And you have a legitimate question, brother, and it's not, because I wasn't even, we were just driving, you know what I mean? So it wasn't like, uh, so, okay, so you're, so you're right, it's not a debate. It, we're still shopping the steel, in my opinion, because as long as you go on to the white man, you my brother, and I don't give a damn about yeah. the topic about none of this, really, though. We got real bigger fish to fry. But since we're on the topic matter, when you said that they said they left black and came back white, we know that all people, tribes, customs, and people of antiquity were people of non euro descendancy so of course they would say any of those things that you're claiming that is before the renaissance before when European came out of its darkness is not you but we want to know this because you don't want to assign a motive if a person said they left and then came back black but we know the Israelites according to the Bible have a history and the many captivities in different places Babylon Assyria they went into captivity and exile in other places so when he said they left left where because they didn't, you know what I'm saying? They didn't say that. You assigned that. Okay. When he's saying they left, they left the region that they was talking about, which was the Middle Eastern region. Okay. It's very simple. Didn't say specific, though. The reason why they look, they was looking for other places, Haiti and stuff, I'm not even going to debate. I'm going to make you right. I'm well, not going to. lie, so you look for No, no, yeah, right. You ain't but the reason why they was doing that is because he's an imposter in the first place. The land didn't belong to him. So if he would have made Haiti Israel, we wouldn't have said that was no God. That would be further proof the white man is the devil. If he would have went to Uganda, we would have said the same thing. Because the ancient biblical mappings okay. of Judah, Gad, Levi, well, Levi didn't have no land. They lived everywhere. Simeon, etc., was all in that Middle Eastern region. That Palestine, Afghanistan, all of that would be parts of Israel. So when the, when the Iranian 
uh, ruler said they left black and came back white, meaning they left this wherever Middle they Eastern. Left wherever they left. Not, not, not wherever they left. He was talking about that specific location of the Middle Iran. East, okay. right? Okay. He's talking about that well, specific that region. Right. You probably said that, but okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, but the history that you're bringing out is correct. But the white man is not a Jew. He's not. So every everything that he was trying to do is demonic, which is why we say the white man is the devil. And, and let me say something to add to what you're saying. Now, I don't, and I come from the school of the Hebrew Israelites. One of the reasons why I debate passionately and have a certain kind of energy about me is certain things that I've adopted in my travels in, in, in the different schools of thought. So there's certain things that I'm still grateful for, and there's a certain energies that I still have that, you know what I'm saying? So when I articulate myself, you see that passion come out, the similar to the brothers, because there's a certain kind of similar training in that. So I have no disagreement. Now, if you want to call yourself and claim that you're Israelites, whether I'm from that school, agree with that school rather or not, I don't care because the white man don't own nothing and all of those things of antiquity is us. If you want to claim that and put your divinity on it and you're breaking down, breaking the knowledge down and you're waking people up with it and y'all doing a good job at cleaning up people, I don't have no argument with that. Because you know why? You know why? At the end, all things will be made manifest and the truth will be prevail anyway. But right now, it's about what you're doing. As long as y'all take the stance that y'all going on on as cracker, exposing him for who he is, and the white man is not the real Jew. We might say there's no sense, oh, these prophets never existed. Even if we argue about that amongst ourselves, the white man ain't even in that at all. He's not even on the table with that debate. You got to take him off because he's none of these people, Kemet or Israel. So that's one thing I will agree with my brother with, and I don't have no contention with that. But Sarnetta did throw me into the uh, shark tank, Israelite shark tank, but I know how to swim. No, you ain't I know how to no. swim in our shark tank, though. No, all right? Man. Peace of no. black. Now, it's all love. No, it's all love. It's all love. No, no. Water, I'm out here. I'm Jack Cruz Stone, man. Yeah, no <laughs> ain't no blood in the water, man. But like what he was saying earlier as far as yeah. what we're doing, I, like I was saying aside another earlier, like he had asked me why I um, didn't fall into the African culture, why the Israelite culture, and I said because I don't see the African culture addressing them over there. I just don't, and they're not gonna. What they're what they're more so about is the facade or image. So they'll rock a onk. Some might put a lock in their hair. Some might put a pharaoh hat on their head. Some might shave all the face off their head looking like a woman. They might do all those things to be commission. But like Jabari said, he ain't even commission. So he's religious. He's as religious as he says the Christians are religious. Because Christians ain't white people. White Jesus is not a savior for black people. So the same way he gets on the Christians, he's a Christian. Because he's following a philosophy that he admits is not his. That's the problem with Kemet niggas. Ain't no nigga, ain't no nigga walk around here Kemet. But y'all following a religion, but y'all get mad at the cat that go into the Christian church. What make you different? As black people, we supposed to find who we are. And like he said earlier, whether I whether he agrees with what I follow, at least I follow something that I can identify and I can pinpoint points. Whether he wants, like he said, let's say if the prophets did exist or didn't exist, and we ain't debating, I'm just using it as a point. I can pinpoint certain things in them Bibles to even give an argument that we're the people of that Bible. There's nothing that you can give me in comedic records to make yourself not commission. True. There's not nothing, true. nothing. There's not if, if there was, commission. if there was as skilled as Jabari claims to be, he would say he was commission. I've asked, I'm going to give it to you. I've asked Shaka. I've asked Polite. I've asked Jabari. No, I ain't asked Jabari, but I will ask Jabari. I've asked tons of comedic brothers to show me the solution in that ancient Kemet shit that's going to fix black people. Okay, I ain't something. seen it yet. Now, you're saying different things. You said that prove that you're commission. Right. And then you say show me what works. That, that's right. out of commission. Okay, that so, fixed people. You just said that. Show me something from the comedic records that, that we can use in 2017 okay. to fix So it. anything. Now, you ever heard of the um, Queen of Fua? It sounds familiar. Yeah, Queen of Fua has a healing holistic center, which the Israelites don't have a, a, a healing center. Okay, but if you do, y'all do. No, no, not <laughs> Okay, where it's, it's, it's not prevalent where you have books and you have healing and you have people that go there and leave there with sicknesses and illness and come out without them. Okay, and what I'm saying is these people practice because it's not about, you know what, there's a such thing as romantic chemism that I don't agree with. Everybody know I represent RBG, black power, because you know why? It has, the, it has the benefit the black man here and our parents, so I represent something that's realistic. So the chemist stuff, no, okay. 
A lot of them do, and that's why you don't see me. If I wear unk, I wear it for a different reason than some other cats do. You know why? Because there is an energy and a meaning that you don't have to be a commission to extrapolate and ascertain the understanding of what that meaning means and it'll comply to your awareness. That's not what that means. See, now when you're, now people that say they follow the traditions, the principles, the customs, and there were laws, 142 negative conventions of my art. Don't you? I thought it was only 42. No, there's 142. 42 is 42 of the 140. That's gonna help I, I, okay, okay. Let me tell you where your Bible gave that. In your Bible, because it said the two greatest laws. Okay, I, I'm gonna compare it. I'm, it's gonna make a point that's gonna connect the dots. You said give where it's gonna work. Well, if your Bible is gonna work, because you have laws, don't you know that a lot of laws in your Bible is in that that predate your laws in the Bible? Like I have not stolen. I have not committed adultery because a lot of things with thieving and over women, women and money is a lot of the murders and a lot of the things that take place in the community. Ha a a a result. That's a fact. It says a lot. Hold on, if this you confess to the dog. Right? Okay, listen, listen, listen. No, we, 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 we want one things at a time. Whoever confesses, and that's what Moses got from a burning bush. Okay, so so what we have a dog. We don't. Okay, listen. We don't want to have the dog versus the bush. Hold on, we don't want to have the dog versus the bush because there's both myths and they're both up for debate. In my opinion, but well, I want to stick to first things first and last thing last. You talking about the principle, not where it came from or who it was spoken to. Okay, so the principles in there, which are 142, and I want you to do some homework and look it up yourself and match it up with your Bible and see if there's any similarities and if there's anything in there. And I'm not romantic with none of them laws and that stuff. Because a lot of people that know the 140, say 142 negative confessions, don't walk around knowing that off the top of the head. They may be breaking comedic laws, don't even know it because they don't practice that or like that. Some of them, many of them that do. Many are romanticists. But one of the things first that you did say is where is it helping people? We have institutions, not just I'm um, Queen of Fuwa in Brooklyn, right? What's the name of that, um, brother? The, um... The health center, she has books, Heal Thyself, books out called Heal Thyself. Um, you have a lot of people that follow comedic principles. Um, Dr. Lelia African, Africa Holistic Health, where they're using things that have been proven. Health is one of the biggest epidemics in our community. More people die from bad health, right? And, and, and disease than murder, than black... Hold on, then shootings. More people die from abortions. When it says, thou shalt not, I have not murdered. If you apply that, you wouldn't be having abortions. If you applied other principles, not you, we know you don't, but this no, I'm saying. saying so it's not like there's just some null and void thing about history with no principles that you're supposed to use to have a civilization in order and in check with balance and laws. They had that in Kemet. Wait, let me, let me just check into it. Then answer your question, right? He said they got the 142. Oh, no sweat. No sweat. You want me? I'll go over my door if you want to sit down. You sure? I'm not going to be on my foot. You say I let him lean on my car. Normally I might whip his ass. No. No, I'm not going to switch. I'm not going to switch. I'm not going to switch. But um, he mentioned. You think you he I'm mentioned the, uh, he mentioned, and now this is the first, this is the first, what Sankofa said, I want to say that first, usually I hear about the 42 negative confessions, but Sankofa just upped the ante and said it's 142 That's right. negative That's confessions. Right. I ain't saying, well, no, I'm not arguing with that, we got over 600, that's all I'm going to say. No, no, but we got over 600. So now, he also brought up Queen of Four, with well, holistic and stuff like that. Now you do need that, right? Mm -hmm. Just like we have some of those same things. My question was, them niggas on the corner, which he did not say. Now, I'm not saying it ain't in there, but he didn't address my question. I said, what is it in the comedic, one, one second, what is it in the comedic doctrine? And then show me who teaches it. I know, listen, when I want to get some healthy shit, I fuck with the comedic niggas. You ever heard of excuse, Ron Heffer? Excuse my language. Excuse my language. Let me finish. I, I listen, I rock with them with they little, what, what's that shit you sell? What's that shit you and Blue sell in the bottle? CMOS, what's your brother sell though? Your brother sold something. It was it was like green or something like that. When I was at uh That's the moringa and the Seamarks. Yeah, the moringa and the Marks mixed together. I bought that. that. Unless a Kemetic person taught you that. Look, I'm I'm giving them the okay. pro right. I'm I'm saying that's what they're doing in the community. Imagine how many other towers no, they no. they taught. Tazaria. <laughs> Not Tazaria. I don't know what the fuck that is. He just said. So like, leave that in there too. I'm just messing with you. Uh, <laughs> um but at the same time that we doing that, now you notice I said we got the same thing. Prospect got it, Daniela got it, we got it. But we also need the other stuff too. 
We can't just have the holistic stuff and then disregard the violence, disregard the lack of brotherhood. I have not committed this. No, no, I ain't, I ain't getting what you, I ain't saying that, I'm not saying that that don't exist. Like I made the funny that that's what you confess to Anubis when you die, which is what they call negative confessions. That's a different subject, so I don't want to go into that. I'm not, but that dog shit is you dead. The burning bushes, you got to do that while you're living. But that's a different subject. So now, I'm not saying that y'all ain't got no confessions that y'all supposed to have. I, okay, I'm sorry. I ain't saying what you brought up is not written in there. What I'm saying is, ain't nobody pushing that. Like, even if you, even if you think of, take the Bible, right? When people want to battle me about the Bible, you know what I got to hear about? The goddamn flood. Yeah. Uh... When when did when did we was when did we have rulership or kingdom? When was we slave? That's what I hear. I don't hear the battle over the law. Black people need law. We are, like like the stories. Like if, if you think about it, real. If we start busting it down, if you want to start going story for story, the stories in Kemet and you ain't Kemet, so you shouldn't get offended. The stories in Kemet is very faggoty. This is what I mean. You got the story of Horace and Seth with everybody tell me is a lesson to learn. You couldn't tell no real nigga today no story about two gods damn near having sex with each other and then got to call sperm out of ear or something like that. You couldn't tell that story to no niggas today. You couldn't do that. You can't tell no family about a story about a son and a daughter had, wanting to sleep with each other or be with each other and then the father got to separate them to bring forth the sky and the sun. You can't say... I poured seed into my mouth to bring forth. I'm almost finished. So, and and but but I don't want to. I don't want to focus. I'm not bringing that up. No, no, hold up. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm not bringing it up. I'm not bringing it up to debate about the story. The point that I'm trying to make is, Kimmy got folk stories. We got folk stories. Let's let's call them folk stories, just for the sake of argument. We both got folk stories. Now, no, no, not even just the folk and bring up the law. It's like, let us have our story. Y'all have y'all story. But let's deal with the laws. Like, see how you bring up them. Next? The first thing you did was bring up them confessions. You ain't even a comedic cat. But when I battle them comedic cats, they don't never bring that shit up. I watch Prospect and Jabari have a whole goddamn debate on which one is better, comedic or Israel. And Prospect, at the end, I get, he only did it at the end, he was the only one brought up the law. Jabari never brought up the law. He too busy bashing the Bible. That's the problem with these comedic niggas. They, they love the Bible more than we do. Give me a story. Give me a story. Give me an interview. Give me a show. Them goddamn comedic niggas do where they ain't talking about the Bible. Okay. And then you look at the Israelites and tell me how many times we banging on Kemet. We spend more time banging on these streets teaching them. So I don't, so, so Sankofa, I don't want you to respond to the folklore. I wasn't bringing it up for you to prove it right or wrong. I'm bringing it up to prove that every culture, yeah, but every culture has stories that tie to them. The Hindus got theirs. You know what I mean? The China man got his story. But you know what the China man and them got, they got a discipline. Oh, them goddamn Buddha monks, they'll sit on one knee, bent over, I mean, with their legs crossed for hours meditating. You die and your kids, kids will. Thank you. They live by their laws. You break a law over there, you're yeah. in the prison. The black man got to live by laws too. I agree with and that's the most important thing. You're the first brother, and you ain't even comedic, so I can't even count you really, but you're the first brother that I've ever spoken to that I said, give me something. And you gave me the holistic shit which black people need. You understand? Now you said a few things very prolifically and very intelligently and now that, that, that Judah spirit that you got on you. But you said that they deal with the Bible. I think that a lot of people deal with the Bible. It depends on who. Some people from uh, their, their sincere stance, okay, and approach is because say if somebody is dead, right? And you, and you, and you want to exhume it. Sonetta, Sonetta, say if somebody's dead, and somebody's dead, right? And you want to exhume the body to try to find out what caused to okay to find out what caused their death, right? And the person was killed and they're buried in Georgia. You're not gonna go to Baltimore or to Egypt to dig that bury up that body up. Excuse me. You're gonna go to Georgia to dig that body up. Our people are spiritually dead, economically, politically dead, and one of the main things that we believe in that we be that we were introduced to in slavery is the Bible. So we got to dig them up out the Bible. We can't go into the Egypt 
and dig them up out of there. This is new to us here. But the Bible is something that's been imbued and embedded in our mind for a long time. So that's one. There's a reason why they love the Bible or they go into the Bible. Why? Because if you're trying to wake up a people that are lost, you have to deal with that which they're lost in. That which they're dead in. You got to dig them up which that which they're buried in. That would be the Bible. Okay, that's one thing. And as far as just laws, um, you have people like the brother... Um, um, Supernova Sloan, shout out to Supernova Sloan, who works with the Bloods and Crips countrywide, who comes from a comedic or commission standpoint. All right, and let's be real, the commission standpoint for blacks in America ain't like no damn ancient comedic people over there. We're different people over here, and we added hip hop to that. Let's be real. We done hip hopped it up a little bit. Let's be real. Jawanza Kanjufi got a book called Hip Hop in My Art. You know, you got to wait for me to finish. You got to wait for me to Okay, well, can I just get two minutes to close out? Okay, don't let me close. You said some things. Two minutes for me is 20, add a zero. Okay, so you're going to let me finish first, just for two seconds, okay? All right, don't. Then y'all got to go now. Y'all got to run now. You was dropping it. You didn't say that when you was dropping it, you had to go. And now saying COVID got the mic, now y'all got to go. So, so, so let me close out with this. There's a reason why we're digging in the Bible. It's not for some love with the Bible or some perception with the Bible. It's because we're buried in the Bible. Then you got the 140 neg negative confessions that you see suspiciously, 142, suspiciously identical with many of the laws in the Bible. We want to address where did that come from and if those things are sufficient for changing people and making people civilized in the Bible, these people who didn't have a law until Moses brought it to them, what is the difference between the people that had it prior to that who had the same laws that you weren't aware of so you can't debate it unless you go do some research on it and then you can line it up and see what came from where and what was first. Okay. Then too, you have a lot of institutions in the community that are stopping violence, gang intervention, um, dealing with economics, dealing with holistic health that from a comedic standpoint that are doing this in the community because you don't know about it. Comedic history. Hold up, hold up. They are. Hold up, hold up. Have you ever heard? Hold up, listen. You ever heard of Ra Unnefer? Have you ever heard of Dr. Muwada Ashby? Have you ever heard of these teachers? Supernova Sloan? Holistic Health Clinics? They're healing us physically. They're healing us mentally. They're healing us physically, spiritually. Hold up. And you see them on the ground doing that. So you got to get. So what? Just because you're unaware of it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Brother Tazaria, just get familiar and then come back and talk about it. Like, go ahead and ask your question. I'm responding. Real quick, because we got to roll. Where David Banner come from? Where he where he come from? Uh, Mississippi. So yeah, why you not? So why you? Was a white man with a bag hold on, brother. So why you not talking about? Why you not talking about? Yeah, we heard him. We heard him. So why you not talking about the brother? Brother, come on, man. Discipline, brother. How come you not talking about the brother that got his head chopped off? Right? And they found his body down the streets, miles away, burnt up. Brother, talk to us about that. Because your brother just put me on to that. And we ain't hear about that. Yeah, I mean, well, if you go on our YouTube channels and stuff like that, we're addressing that. Jenny Honor addressed that on the radio show. That's the reason why he brought it up, because that's all we do. I'm not familiar with the story all the way together. Is it called you want to address it? You scared? <laughs> Nah, he ain't got to dress it, but, but, but what I want to say, what I want to say, oh, no sweat, oh, no sweat. All right, man. I love you. Hey, man, same here. I love what this brother's doing. He's a warrior. Hold on. He's a frontliner. So, yeah, we're intellectually building and sparring and sharpening our, sw our intellectual swords. But at the end of the day, in the beginning of the next, I ride. I'm ready to die for this brother and roll with him. This is a brother, and he's real, and he's on the front line, and he's putting in work, and he's changing souls. He's changing minds. So if you're talking about Kim and you're not doing that, you validate his point. Thank you. Uh, now, and then uh, before so we go, it's real. we can't, what Sankofa said when he said about... <laughs> The last thing before we close out was Sankofa said about the laws and where do we get the laws from. Right. Nobody ever said a nation does not have a moral compass. It's just black people don't have a moral compass. So when he bring up them 142 negative confessions and say that's where we learn from. Like y'all always say, you think they didn't have laws against murder before Israel went into Egypt? Laws against rape? We went to war. The, uh, Simeon and Levi killed the whole Hamitic tribe of men because they raped their daughter. I mean, it's their sister, rather. So we always had laws. Here's what everybody should do their homework on. Go read Leviticus, the 18th chapter. You're going to find out what Moses learned about Egypt. You go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter, and it tells you, do not do after the goddamn Egyptians and the Canaanites what? and them other Africans. No, and it said in Leviticus, the 18th chapter, and you're going to hear them talk about the incest, 
sleeping with your mother, sleeping with your brother, sleeping with your sister. This is the law. The reason this Moses talking and he laying these laws down because that's what them stinking ass Africans were doing. That's why when you look up, what's that? What's that? Uh, Pharaoh uh, with the club foot. He had the club foot. King Tut. Two tacking him, whatever the hell his name is. When they did the DNA, Unc love that goddamn DNA. When they did the DNA, his mama Unk and daddy did he get the Unc part. No, Unc love them goddamn DNA shit. <laughs> <laughs> Unc love that DNA. When they did the DNA on that King Tut, they found out his mother and father was brother and sister. And when Moses saw the incest going on, he told the children of Israel, don't be nasty like them goddamn Africans. Don't uncover the nakedness of your mama. That's your mama. Why are you trying to sleep with your mama? But that is the culture of pharaohs, of the Egyptians. And why would they do that? Because they thought that the bloodline would be stronger if the father slept with the daughter or if the mother slept with the son. And they want, and they thought they was gods. And so they thought they would do that. And the last thing he mentioned at Anubis, and it was just folklore, Google... They found one million dogs mummified in a goddamn pyramid because they believed that dumb shit. We don't believe no damn, you die, go see a dog, you weigh your heart. You, you listen to a dog? A dog, Sarnetta. When you die, you gonna talk to a dog? He gonna smell your heart and shit? Don't give me the, don't, don't give me, he gonna smell your heart. Go ahead. See that? Right, right, this is right. a perfect example uh -huh. of a man that does not understand Kemet. Did they have it was not it was dogs? not about Why did us going dogs? back to dogs. He don't understand it. Why did they have you see what I'm saying? Dogs? He don't this, understand this, this it. He's talking about um poo. He's talking about um poo. Who it is. So Why do you have a million brother, mummified dogs? I think the biggest mistake you made, the biggest mistake you made right now tonight, brother, was bringing Remember was that. bringing up brother Jabari. Because Brother Jabari is going to see this video. Either. And when he you when you I finally right. sit with him this weekend, yeah. this weekend, mm -hmm. that's going to be the biggest mistake you made Jabari because you Jabari. are going to learn that you are African and that you're not a Hebrew Israelite. The mistake Jabari Sir, made was saying he wasn't Kemet. He's a Christian. Ain't no different than a Christian. You know how we, you know how we always say, um, you ask 10 black people what they are, you get 10 different answers because they don't know who they are. Jabari fit right in that category because he said he not Kemet. He not a commission, but he following after Kemet. Why wouldn't he follow after the tribe he come from? If he come from a tribe on the east part of Africa, why he disrespecting his goddamn ancestors? Unless he's going to say, we all connected. We all connected. But ask the Nubians if they was connected to the Kemets. Hell no. Ask the Africans today if they connected. Hell no, we ain't African, we ain't black. I ain't feed no African because I love black people. Shalom. Come on, man. That right there is going to kill you, man. How you doing, sir? What's going on? I'm good. All right. <laughs> <Brother>. <laughs>